Hi everyone and welcome to Brandon on Tech. Today we're going to talk about home automation, something I'm really into and I'm sure most of you are too. I was really into the Amazon Alexa Echo devices that were out there. I had a bunch of them all around the house and then I decided I wanted to go all in on HomeKit. So I wanted to also streamline my network as well. So I, I kind of cleared out all the Amazon Alexa devices. I went all in on HomeKit. I've got HomePods throughout the house. And I want to show you guys how I am using a spare iPad that I have to kind of create my own version of an Alexa device that's HomePod enabled. Um, so we'll talk about that. I'll show you how to set it up. Before we get started, please take a moment to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe to be notified when I post new videos up. I'd really appreciate it. Let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about what's out there for smart speakers just to start off. You've got uh, Amazon Alexa Echo devices, you've got Apple's HomePod and Sonos. Yep, Sonos. They actually let you control music with the voice control on the newer Sonos speakers. So that's a pretty cool feature. I'm gonna include them in there. They're not completely uh, smart homes automation like uh, Apple and Amazon are doing as well. And then there's Google as well. You've got, uh, if you're in the Google ecosystem, you've got those devices too. So I've got HomePods throughout the house. I've got some uh, HomePod minis that are around. I did have a bunch of Amazon devices out there that were spread throughout the house. Some of them had displays, some of them didn't. Uh, the pr problem I had with Amazon devices is that it's a lot of Amazon content that gets pushed to the devices and you can't control it. So one day I had a, a large uh, displayed Amazon Echo device in the kitchen and it had been completely taken over by the latest Avatar movie. There were sound effects and everything that were on the display and it just kind of bugged me. I could turn them off, but it just kind of annoyed me that they were there to begin with. Uh, and I'm not against Amazon at all. There's an Amazon truck at my house almost every day delivering stuff. So uh, love them, love the service, love the delivery that I get from them. But um, wanted to kind of just switch that up a little bit. So I made a decision to get rid of the Amazon devices and I was going to go all in on HomePod. So enter the HomePod. I've got these around the house. I love them because you can use multiple voices to control them. So when I set a HomePod up, uh, my voice can enact anything on it and it's going to my phone. So if I ask it to do a reminder, it's going to put that reminder on my settings as opposed to if my wife asks something, she can interact with it and it the, the reminders are going to go there. We also have shared reminders set up so we can add things to like a grocery list or shopping list or something like that. And that works great. Um, they also have really good sound. I'm using Sonos in the house, so I don't really use the HomePod for sound things or playing music, but they're great devices just to have throughout the house, and I can completely get the full control of what I had with Amazon, and any one of us saying turn off the lights or um, anything like that is going to works great with what I've got set up now with the HomePods and then with my, my HomePod iPad that I've got set up, which I'm going to show you how to do. So now that I've told you all about my journey and uh, how I went from Amazon devices to Apple devices and Apple HomePods throughout the house. Let me show you what I created. It's this device. It's an iPad 12 inch that I had um, on a swivel device that I will link in the description below. And this is what we use in the kitchen for our HomePod. Let's see how I set it up. Okay, so here's the iPad and uh, some settings I just wanted to point out. Uh, that you might want to change when you're setting this up for your own use. Um, I use widgets a lot, so I like having widgets on here on a plain view. If I go in um, to settings and I can swipe down, dictate is one of the things that's, that's great. You do have the small keyboard, so I've made the keyboard small and I can move this around if I need to, but I keep it here. Uh, but the nice thing is, is I can take uh, utilize dictate and I can click the microphone settings and I can jump right into settings from here. So that's a nice way to kind of get that home pod feel from it uh, and be able to jump around into things. So once I'm in settings, one thing that I'm going to do is keep this from um, going to sleep. So if I go to display and brightness and I scroll down, 
um, and look at auto lock, I've got that set to never. So that's the first thing that I did. The other thing uh, is more security. And now I, I'm not going to tell you guys that you should not use a password on your iPad or not use some form of security. You, you probably absolutely should. Um, but if you wanted to, you could go into Face ID and passcode. Um, I've got a very simple passcode on here and I can turn off all of my Face ID features. Um, I can also turn passcode off here. And that way, if I wanted to turn this on and off, it would be really easy to. I, I do, like I said, I've got a simple password on here right now. So if I turn this off and I tap to turn this on, uh, swipe up, it's gonna prompt for a password. But if I turned password off, um, it would be really nice because I could have this off and then when I turned it on and swiped up, it would just go right into my, my home screen. So a uh, couple settings there that you might want to change. You might want to leave normal like you would for a regular iPad, uh, up to you on how you set that up. A couple of other cool little things that you have available when you do something like this. Um, Dackboard is a, an option. This is an app that you can install on your, on your uh, iPad. And this is really nice because it's a really nice display now that, that sits all the time. I have this open all the time on, on, the, on the iPad. And this is, shows shared calendars. It shows weather. I have a Tempest that I am using for weather and up-to-date weather that, that's currently mounted. Um, you could show things like what's playing on your Sonos. I've got a word of the day here. You can configure these tiles and show this, and this is what I leave up and running on my iPad um, all the time, and the background picture changes and everything. So it's really nice. Give, again, gives you that echo show feel to the iPad. It just sits here, and it's available. Um, so that's a really nice feature as well. Sometimes if I want to just show what's playing on the Sonos, this is another little thing that you can do. Um, this will sit like this uh, throughout the day and as I'm walking around or I'm looking at things I can see what's playing on here or I can go into the Sonos app and I can change a station go to a different station that I might want to play um, so that's another great feature as well one other great feature is just the the size of this iPad is is great because it's so big now using like an iPad 11 or even an iPad mini, I think is going to be really nice and you'll get a really nice feel for what's, uh, what you can see on the display itself. But I like to take this out. I'll, I'll go out on the patio and maybe I want to watch some TV or I want, there's a game on or something I want to watch. So YouTube TV comes in to play here. And this is really nice because you get a really nice full screen experience. I've got to just make a couple adjustments here. The speakers on the iPad are great. Um, so this can sit on a table. Sometimes I'm even at the dining table um, and I just want to have, uh, maybe I'm watching a game, a football game or something like that, or a basketball game. And I just want to have it open. I don't really want to use my computer to watch it. So I, I just take this with me. Again, the magnetic um, charger on the iPad is great because this is all charged up. And then when I'm done, I just take it back to the kitchen and plug it in, connect up the magnetic charger. I don't really have to plug anything in there. I just tap it, the, the connector to this, and it charges up. And um, finally, web browsing. This is huge for us because this iPad's in the kitchen. Um, this is something that, again, the I, this stand will tilt up and down. It'll swivel. So this is really nice. If I've got a cutting board in front of me and I'm looking at a recipe, I want to see something or maybe I want to look something up and I want to um, search the web for something. The keypad does appear here at the bottom, but I like to use dictate nearest pizza place. So one of the things you want to do is if you're using iCloud, you want to go to probably, or maybe you already have a family account. So with the iPad, it can only be connected to one account. That's one thing that I think everybody wishes that you could do with an iPad is have multiple accounts connected to it. We're kind of getting there with focus modes and, and being able to do that, but you're still on one iCloud account that's connected to the iPad. So either that has to be my wife's or my account. What I did was, because we are on an iCloud family account, is I went and set up a house account. 
So I created a new iCloud identity um, that's attached to our family account. And now I can use that account for things like HomePod, setting up HomePods throughout the house. It is the house account that I've got on the iPad that I'm using. Um, and so it doesn't interfere with either of our own devices, but it's a device that we can now share things with. So if I were doing like grocery lists or anything else, notes, I can, you know, we can just share those with each other, but now we share them with the house account and we can access that. It also allows for things like AirDrop. If we're, if I want to look up a recipe on this iPad or share a recipe, I can just share it with this house account. And that takes care of um, that part of setting up the iPad. Now I do leverage Google accounts as well. So one of the downsides with a house account on iCloud is that if you have email, um, if you set up an email account or we want a shared email account, it's a little tricky to do on iCloud. So what I did was I created a Google email account and that's our shared account. We actually can get Google Voice off of that. We can get email. We can get a lot of things that are really easy to set up on your phone. So we have a shared email account. We have a shared Google Voice account. And it's really easy just to, to set those up on both our phones. They don't interfere with our own personal email accounts. And that's one reason, um, that's actually a big reason why I went with Google to set up that, that email account. The iCloud shared account is really just for the iPad itself, just to get the iPad on the network and have that device registered on the iPad. Some downsides to doing the setup. The voices, you still kind of like a HomePod, you can use multiple voices and it's gonna detect that on a HomePod. That doesn't work on an iPad. So with the iPad, I do have a HomePod. I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I've got a HomePod that's near this iPad that uh, that Siri is reacting to. But, uh, and that's mainly because the iPad doesn't have the multiple profiles and it can't act like a HomePod. And that's one thing I'm wishing that Apple will kind of remedy with a device next year. And you might not even be interested in that if you do something like this. I might not be interested in it uh, because I've got this setup going, but uh, that's something I wish I would see. Um, that's really the biggest downside to it. Other than that, it's a full iPad that you can do everything with. So take it outside, watch a game. Uh, volume's great on it. It's great speakers on the iPad, great display. Uh, so check it out, try it out. If you've got an iPad lying around, I just wanted to share this with you guys and, and show you how I could set something like this up. Uh, again, appreciate you watching. Hope this video was helpful and we'll chat with you later.